Hello. Am I audible? Yes, absolutely audible. Super. Welcome, Nain Bhai. Nain Bhai, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, yes. Great, great. Yeah. Shall we go ahead, uh, Ashul Bhai? Yes, yes. Hello? Yes, sir, we should start. Okay. Abhishek, start. Abhishek, we can start? Yeah, yeah, we are live. Okay, yeah, great. Ah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Good, good. Or should we wait two minutes because it's 4.28? So, should we wait for 4.30? 4.30 ho gaya, America also. No, two minutes are there, sir. Okay. Nain bhai, I'm, I'm looking uh, after a long time, Nain bhai, we are, we are meeting. Okay. And I think, uh, Abhishek, do you want to just test uh, Nain bhai's presentation also? Nain have you tried uploading? Uh, presentation you have seen, Apna uh, Vikram? Uh, you can yeah you you can share it from uh, this plus sign of uh, this presentation we also have it we can also share okay. it. we can share this sure, sure, I'll do it. No. Ha. so great i think we can start, we can start. Mm -hmm. A warm welcome to everyone who has joined us uh, for today's topic around the uh, role of development manager and PMC in redevelopment with special focus on 33.9 uh, cluster redevelopment schemes. Uh, over to you, Ajay Chakravedi, sir, uh, to talk us about Real Estate Study Circle, which is actually organizing and uh, hosting this particular live event. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm very thankful to all the uh, dignitaries uh, who have come. And uh, it's a privilege. Real Estate Study Circle is a startup. It's a, it's an education and uh, uh, media company. It was started. The today's uh, that uh, Real Estate Study Circle is basically is started for the benefit of the uh, all the stakeholders of the real estate industry for upskilling for upgrading and uh, new new skill development for the existing members of the from the property consultant from the builders employees builders uh, all the stock even the architects everybody they need continuously to upgrade their knowledge and information which is changing that was that was the main idea behind and apart from that networking and a knowledge sharing platform which we have created is very unique in the, in the real estate industry yes Thank you, uh, Ajay ji. Indeed, a wonderful initiative in the form of uh, Real Estate Study Circle, uh, which has organized a lot of uh, good topics which are extremely helpful and practical for the industry. Also, Ajay ji, I would request you to share your thoughts about uh, today's topics. Of course, we have two experts who will be dissecting it and further explaining it. But your thoughts about uh, this particular topic around role of PMC and development manager and special focus on 33.9 in the redevelopment scheme of things. See, um, if we have the automobile, any vehicle, so without driver, the car cannot be drive. I think you are there already in the driving seat, uh, by. So similarly in real estate, the PMC's role is just like a driver. He is the he is the, uh, the person who, who is taking the whole process a very, very huge stakes are there in the in the and in the, in the multiple members cannot cannot handle it and one pro professional person should be there so project management consultant or development manager is very 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 important without that it is not possible any complex because a lot of complex and compliances and to the you know uh, the permissions uh, the the what you call for the government departments from the various uh, stakeholders to coordinate so one PMC is the is is key, you can say, SIM card of the real estate uh, uh, redevelopment part of it. 
even the even the some 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 of the cases they are doing the self redevelopment also in that it's a, it's a, a, a most important so this is the the thought process which come in secondly which you are told ki about the 33 by 9 now it is a need of the hour bombay the, the just uh, blindly giving the fsi it is not going to serve any purpose with milin sir will appreciate that 33 by 9 is the need of the hour because the the cluster redevelopment if it is not there the road will uh, road will come the the open spaces will not come like you know we have the couple of already projects there in the so uh, 33 by 9 i think uh, and 33 by 11 and 30 by 12 we are done recently one when already in the one program and then the event we we have already discussed in very when the length so 33 by 7 b it's a little bit complex it is maybe some cases not viable But 33 by 9, it's a, it's a need of the hour. Both the uh, stalwarts of the industry, we are professional people are there. I, I invite them uh, through you to you know, speak and highlight upon it. Thank you, thank you, Ajay sir, for that uh, good introductory note uh, on our today's topic. I'll straight away get into uh, our uh, question and answer sort of a format of interaction or a panel discussion sort of a thing. Both our speakers are experts in their domains. uh they do not need any introduction they are well known speakers across forums still i will uh, make a note and mention about uh, architect milin changani sir uh, who is a renowned authority on 337 and 339 projects he is on panel of krada mchi naredko uh, and guiding uh, all the developers as well as authorities on the nuances uh, of these two sections also we have with us uh, Shri Nayan Dedia ji, who is managing director at Tufcons. Tufcons is a leading uh, uh, developer, come uh, PMC, come a development manager for various projects across the city. And in fact, recently I am uh, made aware that they are also doing a lot of clusters uh, for all of us to know. Uh, looking forward uh, to having your thoughts. and also uh, nayan ji would be making a presentation about uh, the case study uh, on the subject of uh, clusters uh, which he is already practicing and the challenges etc that he is facing and the benefits that are there so my first question is to you nayan ji uh, you know we often heard the role of a pmc in case of redevelopment but uh, would you just highlight uh, what is the requirement of having a development manager uh if a society wants to go for self redevelopment because by nature self redevelopment would mean that society should do everything on their own uh then what is the requirement or the need or the importance of having a development manager uh, for self redevelopment so what do you nayan ji nayan ji i think you are on mute गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन वेलकम टू एवरी वन ऑन रियलिस्टिक स्टडी सर्कल एंड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल थैंक यू हर्षुल to be here and ajay chaturvedi to give us a platform uh, to uh, exhibit us and thank you milin changani sir who has been also into the 339 basically uh, so uh, regarding this now development manager uh, so development manager role has become very vital uh, during the course when mumbai bank stopped the loan basically so now it has been understood that to get a un uninterrupted finance Uh, in this industry uh, for uh, self development a uh, development manager has to be there because uh, there can be lot of things which are uh, and there are apart from this uh, finance also there are other things also which has to be looked upon uh, like approvals where there is uh, management has to be done for speed money or something like that uh, so there also the role of uh, development manager also comes into the picture uh, also in uh, real estate uh, uh, when sales when sales are coming up Uh, there also something uh, which has the development manager uh, mm -hmm. with his brand and everything can put it uh, into the sales and uh, velocity of the sales can increase through his development managers his role because of his experience uh, past as a developer 
So this is why the development manager basically role is important in self development also. Yeah. So I think yes. uh, very well uh, uh, capsulated. I think right from the approval process uh, to running the cycle as well as the sales uh, development manager. Essentially, if I were to simply put, is the professional part of the developer. As a developer, typically uh, one is a businessman who is taking capital risk and uh, developing the project. And uh, development manager is nothing but the professional part of the services that a developer should give. So I think uh, this is really important for all societies seeking self redevelopment. That while uh, the term is self redevelopment, one should have uh, someone who is responsible uh, to execute all the functions professionally. Just how we have a architect, we have a contractor, we have a PMC. Uh, we should similarly have a development manager. Also, there is often a confusion uh, with societies in NG that with appointing a development manager. Uh, is it still required to have a PMC? What is the role scope uh, difference uh, with regards to the PMC? Or can PMC be avoided completely if a development manager is getting appointed? Yeah, uh, the basically there is a myth between uh, this thing that if there is a development manager, why there is a requirement of PMC. Uh, but here, what we want to uh, underline here uh, is basically the professionals uh, where the designing, planning and everything has to be done, uh, has to be done by the society themselves and not the development manager. If the development manager hires this, uh, all this professional team, then there is very, uh, there is no difference between a developer and a development manager and the main essence of self redevelopment will be diluted. So uh, the main essence, when you talk about the main essence of all self development, where the society has the control of their designing, planning, uh, and to uh, see through this all approval process and everything, and even through the construction phase also. So here, the uh, they would like they, uh, the society should hire the professionals as well as PMC to guide on all these things, and uh, then only they should hire a development manager who has his capacity, who has a uh, better uh, feature like as a uh, earlier said that a uh, finance uh, bridge gap funding or a uh, full funding in the uh, project and uh, look after the overall project and uh, as a uh, uh, to run this project with a brand name and everything so right the once uh, we had uh, some earlier webinar uh, where it was already said that in a mahabharat uh, there is uh, there are two main characters one is krishna and arjun so pmc is like a krishna and uh, uh, DM is like an Arjun. So that is, this is what the difference between, uh, it is the requirement when a Mahabharata also required both these heroes uh, to complete this uh, whole, to come over the evil. So same way when you have to complete the redevelopment project, uh, you should have a Krishna and as well as Arjun also in your team. I think okay. very, very well uh, captured uh, with the metaphor of uh, mythology. And I think mm -hmm. that would really make uh, it extremely clear to all our audiences, which also includes uh, members uh, of society who want to go for redevelopment. I think at this point, I would uh, like to bring in Milin, sir. Uh, Milin, sir, uh, basically, we've always had these issues about viability of projects. And more so ever after uh, the premium discount of 50% getting over. Uh, but however, all the developers as well as societies still want to go for redevelopment, uh, given that there is a massive, uh, what do you call as a FOMO syndrome or fear of missing out. So every society wants to go for redevelopment. But given these challenging circumstances and situations, what is your recommendation in terms of DCR, which kind of schemes uh, can these societies opt for? Uh, at least in terms of clubbing or in terms of uh, doing combination of two schemes so that the viability of the project is intact despite the rising cost of premiums and construction and uh, you know challenges on sales account over to you Milin sir hi hi Ashul. so i think you rightly pointed out you know okay by, uh, our honeymoon period is over where the this premiums are at 50 percent discount stamp duty was a reduction and now we are back to the pre-2019 era. So there is no increase, I would say, but the increase is already there, which was reduced. And now it is back to the same scenario and which is making most of the schemes unviable. Uh, it was unviable earlier and it is becoming unviable now. 
so i think people have now uh, uh, some of them have resorted to do combination of schemes combination can be done with either 3311 which is a pap scheme uh, or 3312 but let's understand uh, you know what what is the difference what is the primary difference when would one go for 3311 or 3312 you see if you are on a 9 meter road you cannot go for 3311 because for 3311 the minimum road width required is 12 meters for 3 fsi and uh, for 18 meters you will get 4 fsi whereas in 3312 whether it is 12a under uh, contravening uh, tp schemes or 12b which is in the alignment of road you can go up to an fsi of 4 even on a 9 meter road so that makes a huge difference on the society redevelopment today when the cost are very high to bring down the cost you need increase in fsi at a much lower cost so that is available under 3312 which can be done in city as well as suburbs people are always getting confused because you know okay, can it be done in city can it be done in suburbs because people have not been doing thing in suburbs but what they don't realize is that 3311 cannot be done on a 9 meter road for that you need a minimum 12 meter wide road yeah but what what also understand that if you have a 12 meter road and if you have an 18 meter road 3311 makes more sense because the cost of premiums of generation of fsi in 3311 is much lower than 3312 because 3312 the discounts are offered only if you do combination with 337 which is a redevelopment of a cess property and in suburbs you don't have cess properties so when you want to do combination of schemes especially societies and uh, here the forum is mainly on society redevelopment i think the combination of schemes can be done with 3311 if your road widths are higher and uh, if your road widths are lower you must go with 3312 which is a ideal way of combining uh, two schemes getting up to an fsi of 4 at much lower cost of course the premiums are higher but the overall cost of the per square feet is much lower and that averages out the higher costs that is already there in the redevelopment so these kind of combinations we should not shy away from in fact we should be bold enough to go ahead for this combination of schemes architects societies to not feel resistance that you know paps are going to come into our building but you have to understand that today if you want to do a good development if you want offers more than 20 25% on your current uh, areas then you need to do a combination of schemes otherwise the hit has to be taken by you ultimately developer is going to put in x amount of money for making x amount of profit if he doesn't get that profit he is not going to offer you the ultimate hit is taken by the landlord or the society which is go undergoing development either don't go in for redevelopment if you feel that is not the immediate requirement i always say that people should go for redevelopment when they actually need it i mean don't take it as a liberty for only profit earning but as a like, genuine requirement for the new lifestyle wow there's so many points which really Uh, are brought in by Milan sir. Uh, I think clearly, if I were to look at uh, three or four key takeaways, one would be check the road width. Uh, you know, if your road width is not in place, because there is often uh, this myth which is going around societies that you can do PTC, you can do thirty-three eleven, and you can increase FSI. Uh, but if you are not qualifying on the road width criteria itself, uh, it doesn't make sense absolutely. Plus, uh, if you are a cess building or uh nonsense etc you also have to be careful around paps because as rightly sir said the concessions are available to paps only for cess uh if it's a nonsense building then these concessions are again ruled out and last and most importantly do not shy away these are official schemes available in dcpr speak to your architect about it often there are lot of misnomers going around in society that there will be an sra logo or you know what kind of people will come or the scheme will get uh, stalled uh, oc will not come but these are all rumors i think milin sir in practice has done hundreds of projects in combination and uh, easily if you sit with him he can vouch for uh, and show you with examples about successfully uh, projects which are delivered also milin sir i would like you to talk about 339 because that has been one area which you've really aced in your practice also and that is one area which i've always seen you personally advocate also city does need cluster developments city needs uh, better plan developments the dcpr requires us to leave a lot of open space uh, and it's really not very practical uh, unless done in cluster so what are the requirements because when we say cluster we often as a layman think that you need five buildings 10 buildings but uh, what does dcr actually mean by cluster uh, what is it that one needs to qualify for 339 and how is it beneficial 
or disadvantages if you could dissect it it could be a little longer an answer uh, because 339 is uh, really the core uh, at this point of time in the city with larger layouts uh, coming in for development over to you minutes sir i think i think harshul this is the right time for doing cluster redevelopment and uh, post 8 july 2021 the incentives have increased not just for the developers but for the existing members as well. So let's understand, you know, this cluster redevelopment is not dependent upon number of buildings. It's depending upon the size of plot. Even if a single plot in cities more than 4,000 meters and in suburbs more than 6,000 meters, you can qualify for cluster provided you have a minimum 12 meter existing road abutting the site within 500 meters of 18 meters road or you're abutting an 18 meters road. So if you have qualified for these two criteria, you can in principally go for cluster redevelopment. The next criteria comes for the selection of the structures in the uh, cluster redevelopment, where if your building has to be minimum 30 years of age. So if you've already done a development in the year 2000 and you want to do cluster redevelopment today, then you'll have to wait for a couple of years more. But uh, if your buildings are aged more than 30 years, then you can easily go into cluster redevelopment. However, if your buildings are, you know, uh, declared dilapidated for some reason or the other, there is a provision under 339 1.2 sub clause 4, where other buildings which are the un, uh, unhabitable can be taken up with the special permission of the high power committee. So it's a very good scheme. You have to understand that today and among the most redevelopment schemes, the cost of FSI is the lowest in 33.9 because the premium cost, if you compare to 33.7b, even say open space deficiency is just 2.5% compared to 25% of 33.7b. Staircase premium is nil if it's a composite building. Whereas in a 337B, even for the existing rehab, the staircase lift proposed is by charging premium. Your wow. rehab is anyways free and even the sale becomes free if it's a composite building. So you have to understand that not just the cost, I think all the three stakeholders, which is the members, uh, the developer, as well as the MCGM benefits under the scheme. How? Number one, today under 337B, most members will get offers not more than 20, 25% and at the most 30%. Average. Whereas by law in cluster redevelopment, depending upon the size of plot, suppose if it's a plot in suburbs, which is say 6,000 meters, minimum additional area is 15% plus 35%, which is 50% as it is. And that to 35% fungible is cumulative. So the effective benefit is more than 50%. If your plus cluster is more than one hectare, up from between 15 to 35% is the minimum area a developer has to give or a development has to give to the existing members in addition to the fungible. So whatever offer you get under 337B by law, which is say 35% fungible only and at the most 10 square meters, which is not compulsory, here under table A of 33.9, the entitlement to the existing members is a compulsion to be given, which is a rarity in the sense now you are entitled for 50-60% more additional area because you've gone into cluster redevelopment. The second wow. biggest advantage is the developers per se, once he gives you that area, he gets between 85 to 130% incentive based on size of plot and land rate upon construction rate ratio. So he's also not complaining because the amount of incentive he is getting to offset the cost which he's going to construct for you is also getting compensated. The uh, one thing which I missed earlier is the if the minimum size of the tenements is say less than 300 square feet in uh, 33.9 or uh, in your current uh, scheme, the minimum area is also specified. So if your area is currently say 225 square feet, for example, the minimum to be given is 376 plus 15% plus 35%. So you can understand effectively you get almost 100% more. So cluster redevelopment is such a scheme where the maximum benefit goes to the members. The second best benefit goes to the developers. And the third benefit also goes to the corporation because there is a surplus area which is generated in case of four FSI plots and which is shared between the developer and the uh, members. And it becomes a win-win situation for all the stakeholders in the uh, development. In addition to that, as I earlier mentioned, the cost of development because the open space deficiency is almost 10% of what is in the general redevelopment and staircase lift for composite buildings. What is meaning of composite? Rehab to free high. But if rehab plus sale, if it's within the, uh, if rehab is more than 50%, then your sale also, there is no staircase lift premium. Just imagine the impact of these two premiums vis-a-vis 337B development or any other combination scheme development. So 
cluster redevelopment is the future. The process has now been much more streamlined. We have done clusters in suburbs also. We've got the approvals also. MCHM is very, very aggressive to give you approval under cluster redevelopment. They are very proactive. And the process may seem longer, but it is a very doable process. Between four to six months is a timeline we should catch. But that is the way to go forward in terms of development today. Wow. But there is uh, just a follow-up question on 33.9. Uh, there is always a fear that, you know, with uh, 33.9, one might have to go for high-rise buildings. Uh, or, you know, so how is the time process uh, for high-rise power committee or HPCs uh, for 33.9 vis-a-vis a regular development that they would go for? Or is there no difference uh, with regards to the same? Uh, it would still follow the same uh, timeline per se. I will answer this question in two parts. The first part is, you know, the high-rise definition is more than 70 meters. But up to 120 meters, there is no high-rise committee as on date for any development across Bombay. In 33.9, they have come up with a gazette, which is for suggestion objection stage, that up to 250 meters, there should not be a high-rise committee, which will be another step in cutting down the process. Now, you have to understand why this is done. is because there is an environment impact assessment study and a traffic simulation study as a prerequisite before submission itself. So it takes care of all the parameters of the impact on the environment. The structural uh, impact is taken by, by the structural engineer because today we have structural consultants who are competent enough to design buildings of up to 250 meters. There are so many towers across Bombay you must have seen which are more than 120 meters and up to 250 meters. So the competency of the consultants available today is way higher than what was probably earlier which was the fear I would say. The competency was always there. Let us be very clear. But the fear that whether they are competent enough to handle such high-rise projects was there and that is why the committees were introduced as a fallback mechanism so that there is no alteration there is no dilution of norm by smaller projects or by the insistence of the developers on the consultants today consultants are much more uh, stronger in terms of their opinion because they know the rules and regulations do not allow them those leeway so as far as high rise is concerned up to 120 meters i suggest 120 meters should be the ideal construction uh, size in terms of height of the building because the cost of construction increases 15, 20, 30 percent as you go keep going more than 120 meters. So the cost of project also increases over time if you go more than 120 meters. So the ideal size I would restrict, I would recommend is 120 meters. Great. So at this point, Nainbhai, I would like to bring you in. Uh, if you could suggest uh, what has been your experience uh, with these large societies uh, in terms of uh, uh, their readiness to go uh, into different schemes. Nenba, I think uh, you're I on think... mute. Hello. Hello. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Nenba. Uh, the problem basically uh, is not with the largest societies because they are into the one society only uh, if the plot size is uh, more than 6,000 square meter in suburb. The problem is with the uh, smaller societies, uh, th uh, those who want to go with uh, include into the cluster development or no, that is the question. So basically what in a, uh, in, in Mumbai, the society is the every near society is like a Pakistan. So we don't have a Vaga border at the border actually, it is border here only itself. So that is one more major uh, roadblock to the cluster development. Uh, secondly, the main point again, when they uh, start with the cluster development, people feel that they should have their own flat at this same place only. So which is basically uh, diluting the main benefit of cluster redevelopment, where the redevelopment has to be made uh, properly and everything open space has to be more and more. And uh, that is what the uh, it, is, it should go vertically. That is the main idea of cluster redevelopment and have more open spaces. So people generally uh, uh, in these societies, uh, they don't uh, generally adapt to this uh, situation where they will uh, have to shift from somewhere else because uh, if they are on road fronting, they should have uh, they should go into the internal side. So they, these are the challenges which comes across. Then there are some all other challenges like uh, the, if there are different societies. Some societies 
uh, are uh, not in uh, they have not uh, uh, convinced not yet convinced the name on pr card is not been obtained and some uh, some issues like that so these are the basically these are the main thing but the main what we have seen uh, majorly into this is the first part where the waga border is not at the border at, uh, between india and pakistan but it is between the both the societies only so that is the major challenge while going for cluster redevelopment within the societies So I think that is purely experience talking, and I can completely relate with the on-ground uh, pressing issues uh, which exist, where uh, suddenly, uh, what do you say as "ham saath saath hai" becomes "ham apke hai kon" when this whole uh, redevelopment process of joining societies exists. So, yeah, unless uh, you are right, uh, if it's a one society on PR card, it's still okay. But when uh, this whole talk of combining multi societies is as good as political parties trying to vote up support and uh, uh, get uh, to that number but milan sir uh, mm -hmm. if you know as a developer one has option uh, in the island city to do a combination with uh, 3312 uh, for a 3370 scheme uh, we are we going to a cluster what would you recommend or it will have to be looked case to case basis in terms of for better main target Are we able to hear Harshul Nain Bai? Uh, I can hear you. I can hear you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Harshul. Carry on. The developer, when one has an option, my is advisable. Uh, still at nine. Uh, is there a benefit, or uh, one will have to look at it to a basis and then take a call uh, basis both the schemes, or on a generic basis, you would still say that thirty three nine is more convenient. Uh, we serve a combination of thirty three seven to thirty three twelve, and by convenient, I would also mean more viable. Sorry, Arshul, I could not get your question again. Could you repeat? So, so basically, I'm trying to say that 37 with 39, or or 7 and 39 will still be 39. Ajay, are you able to hear him very clearly? I I understood the essence of your question. What you're trying to say is uh, is the combination of schemes uh, yes. easier to execute compared to 339, correct? Correct. And is it more yeah, yes. viable to do a thirty-three seven, thirty-three twelve, uh, vis-a-vis thirty-three nine, or uh, you would still say look at it case to case, or on a generic basis you would say thirty-three nine will still outscore for the city? No, uh, 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 I would say that by you know if your uh, plot is available to you of more than six thousand meters and the road width is available to you, I think your first uh, analysis should be through your PMC or your architects is to do a working for thirty-three nine. Compare it to your uh, schemes of 33-7 and 33-12 or 33-11 combination, because it cannot be a generic answer so easily. Take away only one scheme is viable. However, on a on a uh, overall basis, out of ten schemes, I would say seven schemes or eight schemes, 33-9 becomes more viable. Only where you know the existing consumption is very less. For example, an FSI was one was permissible, but only 0.5 is consumed. Then doing a cluster redevelopment. Becomes difficult because there is more surplus area compared to what is the incentive area. Then it makes more sense to go in for combination of schemes, which is under 33-7B with regulation 30, as well as 33-12 or 33-11, depending upon the road width that is available. Okay. Execution-wise, yes, a combination of schemes is at only MCGM level, whereas cluster redevelopment has three-step process. You go to the MCGM, you go to the High Power Committee, then you go to the government for approval. After the government approval, you come back to MCGM and then start the entire approval process. so there is uh, an add on time which is required in cluster redevelopment but the cost benefit ratio for societies which are consuming higher fsi or slightly more than uh, what was there is way too much 
to sub, uh, sub, subsidize all of these time loss that is there. But if your existing area is actually lower than one FSI, then going for cluster redevelopment might not become that suitable to you. So that is why this is not exactly a generic, but depending upon plot to plot basis, and then it can be worked out. But on a major scale where people have consumed FSI or there is extension of FSI done uh, subsequently because of handing over of road or reservations available taken from the site, then cluster redevelopment makes much more sense any day. We see this similar situation in the island city also, where uh, there are plots where a lot of uh, overconsumption has happened, or typically consumption more than one FSI has happened, what we uh, call as incentive scheme plots. And if such plots are of nature more than 4,000 meters, uh, you would recommend to look at uh, 33.9 for blindly, sure. Blindly, blindly. Great. And Anything this is more than actually... 1.4 if you have consumed. 1.3, 1.4 if you have consumed on the site. 33.9 will hands down become much more feasible, viable and a better scheme to do. At the same time, when you are going for large scale developments, your amenities are better, your open spaces are better, your uh, light and ventilation is better. So I think the city does not need pencil like developments of our smaller plots. The city needs, and I'm a strong advocate of that, the city needs a scheme where there is sufficient light and ventilation provided to its inhabitants for the next 60 years. We want a good lifestyle. We want a healthy lifestyle for our future. So I think this would be the biggest key takeaway for those members staying in the island city where uh, they've been deprived of redevelopment due to overconsumption on site wherein they had no role. Of course, schemes of uh, added benefit under incentives have come. Uh, but clearly, if they can join in and, and for city, uh, you know, please note that the requirement for cluster is very low. It is only one acre. 4,000 meter is the only requirement as compared to suburbs where you still need uh, one and a half acre. So if that number is met, uh, I think clearly it is a huge win-win proposition uh, for the habitants as well as uh, the developer. Uh, on this note, uh, Nayanbhai, I would request you uh, to make a presentation with regards to uh, the work that you've done, uh, your experience in the cluster, uh, some case studies uh, which could actually give a practical on-site uh, visualization to the sure sure thank you i'll share my screen first So Abhishek, you can help just put, or you are doing it yourself, right? Nayan Bhai? Yeah, yeah. Abhishek. Uh, I would also like to remind uh, the audience to send in their questions, uh, which, you know, I will be picking it up uh, and ask the expert panel to address them. So immediately after this uh, case study presentation of Nayan Bhai, we will do a quick round of five or six questions uh, which we are getting. So we have a chat box where, uh, uh, you know, you all can comment uh, or also send a chat about the questions that you all have in mind, which we can take it up live uh, with the experts. Welcome, Janak Bhai. A pleasure to see you. Thank you. <laughs> Shanak Bhai is a very active member with regards to society redevelopments and uh, various forms of developments across the city. So I I'll so in the meanwhile while the presentation is coming up, uh, Milan sir, I'll also be looking at the questions on the chat box and try and pick them up. Uh, sure, sure, right. So that yeah. yeah and, can you uh, see the screen now? Then uh. feel free to stop as soon as the screen is uploaded so that we begin with the presentation. I can see my screen. Can you see? No, we can't see the presentation. So 
I'll just get into the questions in the meanwhile. So, Milin sir, one of the question is how is surplus calculated in 339? Okay, let us take a basic example. Say your plot area is 4000 and uh, your permissible FSI is 4. So, 16,000 meters is the total built up area. Whatever is the rehab area entitlement as per your existing area plus the table A which gives you additional area and the incentive. Suppose your existing area was uh, 1500 and the incentive you got also is 1500, so 3000. So there is a 1000 square meter surplus available, uh, uh, sorry, from 4000 into 16,000 meters and if the existing was rehab, if there is a balance area left, then that is called the surplus area, which is to be shared in the ratio as per the table C, again as per LR upon CR ratio. So the surplus area is worked out after deducting the rehab area as per the entitlement on the law plus the incentive over and above that. Whatever is the balance area is called the surplus area to be shared. Great. So I think that was a question by Janati Gala. We also have a question uh, by Mahindra Savanji about what would be the status of existing societies who were to join cluster if they were more than four. I think as addressed by our experts, uh, the point around uh, multiple number of societies is not relevant for cluster, but it is more around the size. For island city, it is uh, 4,000 meters and uh, for suburbs, it is 6,000 meters. Even uh, if it's a single have... car of more than 6,000 or 4,000 is sufficient to qualify, provided you have the road width. Yes. Then I think he has a follow-up question on what would be the title of land and the ultimate building accommodating all different societies. I think it will work out to one single title. We do not have a point of multiple PR cards since it's one cluster. I think clearly after the talk, a lot of interest has got uh, activated around 33.9, as I can see from comments. Is uh, There is a question by Namit Kenny. Uh, is it possible to get 33.9 approval if the society is more than 6,000 meters and has a single PR card? Yes, of course, uh, it is possible. Uh, Grace Pinto has a question. How is fungible FSI calculated? If Sorry, Ashul, I lost you. Please calculate it uh, on your area, carpet area, as per your agreement and the BMC approved plan. So I think we've uh, sort of exhausted the questions which exist, uh, which pretty much were there on the box by the audience, most of which around 33.9. So at this point, I think, yeah, we have the screen up. So Nayan Bhai, uh, over to you to do the presentation. Shall I start with my Janan presentation? Bhai, you could go on mute. Uh, I think the background uh, uh, voice is coming. So you could just put on mute, Janak Bhai. Okay. Okay, so a real estate study circle, live webinar on room redevelopment of development manager at BMC with focus on cluster redevelopment, section 33.9. So now uh, I have just first uh, jotted out the general role of BMC in redevelopment or space redevelopment. Uh, first, uh, any, uh, for BMC, we just prepare a project review, then tendering for selection of developer, PM, uh, and contractor in self uh, to guide the society in selection of developer or contractor in development, uh, reviewing on planning and DA graph or contractor agreement, uh, review of project approvals, then construction supervision and reporting in the society, and work assessment and reporting. And then lastly, the completion and reposition, so closure of the project for uh, redevelopment and work. This is the normal uh, general role of PMC in redevelopment. Now, specific role of PMC, where there's a cluster redevelopment, then what the additional uh, work, what uh, role the PMC has to conduct. So there is some understanding the cluster redevelopment policy. First, uh, to make to understand the cluster redevelopment policy to society, means they have to uh, explain the policy, what, uh, what are the benefits, its benefits in terms of additional 
as well as enhance project value and standard of living and guide on how to proceed jointly in the process means if there are different different societies then how the society can join uh, uh, with among themselves and proceed ahead for cluster redevelopment then there is a plot uh, then a lot of uh, societies think that they have to do a plot amalgamation or they have to form a federation uh, so uh, most of the societies felt that in order to move ahead in cluster development a common federation is required However, uh, in the societies where we are doing right now uh, cluster development, we have explained them there is no requirement of federation. There is no, uh, there is no uh, 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 means there is a common layout, common ground of any society, common plot of any society. So it's better to have uh, so mere GBR and MOU between the societies shall be enough for the redevelopment. And all the societies or both the societies or many plus uh, whatever societies can conduct the entire process individually. So they have to conduct the process individually. Anyways, if they form a federation also, they have to do twice this work in a federation also and as well as in the society also. So what we have uh, uh, told to the societies, we have advised to the societies that they can do entire process individually, jointly, but independent minutes writing and everything. So there is no requirement of any plot amalgamation initially and no requirement of any uh, federation if there is no common layout uh, uh, particularly. So requirement of HPC, many societies re resist to join together in cluster development with another society due to non-transfer of conveyance. So I earlier said that there is no conveyance and there is procedural delays. Then what will happen? Then our EVA, first, uh, firstly, the HPC approval, it takes a lot of time. Then if there is no conveyance of the neighboring society or the other societies which are joining together in the cluster, then there will be again a delay in that part. So uh, usually in, the, in such kind of societies, what we have uh, guided societies to in, instead of inter into a development agreement, uh, they can immediately go with the developer and sign a MOU and proceed it with the first HPC approval and simultaneously the conveyance of the neighboring societies can also be done. Uh, meanwhile, so this can uh, so this uh, also can be uh, covered up. So reposition and handover. So now the main uh, at the time of reposition to guide through the creation of common federation or merger of societies because there are different size of uh, different societies. So now they will form into one society or a federation, different different societies and form, form a federation out of that for streamlining the operational activities of society, common maintenance and ownership of the project. Also to guide the society regarding the complete handover of project, product warranties, waterproofing guarantees, AMC uh, to the newly installed mechanism, etc. on completion of project and reposition and assist the society with respect to resuming the regular operations of the society in its redeveloped building. Either then can be one society or uh, there can be a resultant society, one society and other societies can un uh, unmerge. So they can be dissolved and merge with other societies. So these are the what specific role of PMC has to uh, play in a class cluster redevelopment uh, specifically. So uh, we have a project case study, a cluster redevelopment. Uh, there are uh, other projects also where we are already appointed as for a cluster redevelopment, but I'll take only one case study uh, where uh, basically they have uh, 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 bro uh, broken this uh, wall basically between both the societies. And now it's a, like a Berlin wall. So West Germany and East Germany have joined together. So these are the cluster redevelopment four bungalows, Andheri West. So earlier when we have a regular policy uh, with these two, two societies, Blue Art Cooperative Society and Hariom Sai Southern Cooperative Housing Society Limited, uh, the plot area was 6,550 meters for Blue Arch, uh, where the road width was 9 meter, the permissible FSI, including fungible FSI was 2.7, whereas for Hariom Sai Southern, uh, the plot area was 2,800 square meter is, and uh, the road width is 12 meter right now, and uh, the permissible FSI maximum is 2.97 so maximum additional area they were getting is around 22 percent and 25 percent with parking like a mechanical and stack because an independent society and to consume that fsi into that plot uh, that was the area and amenities and garden area uh, were being limited uh, into that so for a blue society as the plot was bigger so there was a minimum uh, minimal amenities were there but for harium says there were lesser amenities because of the size of the project so uh, that was the challenge. So both studies were trying for redevelopment for last five, seven years individually. Uh, due to CRZ restrictions, both societies could not move ahead in redevelopment. 
uh, later with certain clarity on CRZ, the society has individually started development process under regular policy in DCPR like 337B, where the available offer was not matching expectation of the members uh, to, uh, who were uh, opting for redevelopment. So Blue Arch Society has a plot of more than 6,000 square meter. However, due to the road width of 9 meters, cluster policy eligibility didn't suffice. So in one society, the plot area was 6,000, more than 6,000 square meter. But due to 9 meter, the cluster policy eligibility didn't suffice. And Harium size then was a 12.2 meter road, uh, uh, which later on due to the circular uh, stating access from minimum 18 meter road uh, with arterial road of uh, less than 500 meters had eligibility as per road width. But the plot area was not sufficient individually to go for cluster redevelopment. So these were the challenges. So we overcame these challenges. Both societies decided to join go for redevelopment in cluster redevelopment policy. Uh, the drawbacks of both the plots completed complemented each other. That completed their eligibility criteria for cluster redevelopment with combined plot area of 9350 square meter road abutting 12.2 meters wide, which is an arterial road to a 30 meter wide DP road now. So moreover, the CRZ restriction didn't remain a drawback. Now, both the societies were cordial and agreed to work together in the betterment of the project. Uh, members of Blue Arch and Hariom Sai Sadan Cooperative Society also showed flexibility of allotment and agreed to forego location specific allotment requirement in order to have a proper and beautiful planning. So these were the basically overcoming challenges and essentially looking uh, at the larger benefit for the project to both the societies. So both the societies got a, a larger benefit and this is the benefit what they received right as of now they have received. So the same plot area, the additional area now they are getting is 45% where there is a surface parking. There is no mechanical parking right now and open space area into this project is a, a more than 30% of the total area, whereas the amenities and recreation area is approximately 15% of total area. So today now they are getting a better planning and a better uh, living uh, uh, better. So that is what they are aiming for. So this is the benefit which uh, cluster redevelopment with the society can get. Uh, so now coming to the second part that self development in a DM model, uh, there is one more society uh, which we are doing. So uh, what is the self development understand to understand by the members? Uh, there is some benefits of self development. We have uh, jotted out some benefits of self development. Uh, so no transfer of title land rights. So there is no development agreement to be done with the uh, developer. So it is title and land rights remain with the society. Uh, professional consultants appointment is done by the society themselves. Uh, society uh, will have full control in the project. Uh, projects get guaranteed funding through development manager. So when they appoint a development manager, they get a guaranteed funding and uninterrupted funding also. So construction finance with land collateral can also be possible uh, with the help of development manager. He can put his uh, papers with the collateral finance and get the loan also for the project construction finance. So development manager should be a co-promoter. He also becomes a co-promoter in RERA with the society. Uh, and the But profit of the project all goes to the society. So the uh, risk and rewards of the project remain with the society. So these are the benefits of self-development, few benefits. Uh, so now there is a main essence of a self-development is a project control and transparency. So what are these? So appointment of PMC and all professionals in the hands of the society. So they, that is not done by any third party, like a, in a developer model, developer has to do uh, appoints all professionals in the team, but in uh, self-development society themselves have this power. Uh, there, there is a say, the society has a say in project planning and approvals in hands of the society through its professionals. Then selection of development manager is also in the hands of society. Selection of a construction contractor, which is not, which is absence in the, uh, absent in the uh, developer model. So which they get also a selection of a construction contractor, which also remains in the hands of the society and selection of a marketing agency to sell their uh, additional uh, flats to uh, in open market. They can uh, appoint a marketing agency and they have their uh, all the control will be in their hands. Now, what is the specific role of PMC in a self model uh, where a DM is there? So what is the role of PMC? Uh, so professional services, uh, usually their uh, society will require a lot of other services. So either they can select all a uh, professional uh, team, which is uh, providing all services under one roof, uh, like professional services will be required, like project planning and designing architect, license architect for approvals and procurement of all types of approvals, NOC and complete RCC and structural designing. They'll require an RCC consultant, MEP planning. So MEP consultant, legal consultancy, advocate, 
rera consultancy accounting etc so all these uh, professionals they have to hire either they can hire a pmc plus these all professionals or a pmc can provide all this uh, role under one roof also which tufcons do so selection then there is a selection of a development manager to provide guidance in selection of competent and suitable dm for the project by way of tendering or request for proposal uh, so finance uh, then the finance is required so um, uh, pmc has to uh, check in with the development manager his uninterrupted finance also comes in the project and what are the project cost has to be estimated uh, by the development manager and the pmc together uh, like all the expenses which are towards a uh, building proposal or other tdr cost society rent brokerage shifting site expenses professional fees dm fees so everything all cost has to be done by the society so what are the cost uh, required so whatever uh, cost will come into the future that has to be properly budgeted then another uh, selection of contractor so once this has been done plans are approved from the uh, mcgm or mada the uh, planning authority then they have to uh, select a contractor uh who uh, complete uh, the pmc has to prepare a complete tender of are you able to hear no no i think there's a freeze okay nayan bhai can you hear us Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, sir. I think uh, while it comes online, I think we'll just discuss a few more pointers. Yeah. I think some of the questions where they said, you know, that yes, uh, yes. if your existing plus rehab is much higher and there is no surplus, then you don't. If there is negative surplus, there is no something like negative surplus. If existing plus rehab is more than FSI four, there is no question of surplus. Then uh, somebody was asking on uh, uh, what do you call uh, uh, CRZ. I mean, this is one critical aspect in the model. that if your yes, plot sir. is in CRZ, then uh, you see the notification which was issued on eighth of July twenty twenty one, where the premium was enhanced, uh, the premium was reduced, the incentive were enhanced, the entitlement was enhanced, is not applicable. to plots in crz then it has it can do cluster redevelopment but as per the original notification as published on 2018 in the dcpr 2034 but the subsequent modification which was done post january 2019 which is a cut off date for crz cases uh in this case it is 8th of july 2021 then that regulation is not applicable to for plots in crz so that that becomes a very very critical factor that if your plot is in crz then these new regulations are not applicable then it makes sense sometimes to do combination schemes because that will give you much more viability and uh, as somebody said ke bhai you know the time process is very long no it's not very very long what happens is that there is an add on time of 4 to 6 months earlier uh, because of the lack of viability in cluster redevelopment also projects were getting delayed uh, there there is a process to send the proposal to the government and getting approval from the government but there also the approvals are coming pretty fast more than 5 to 6 cases have happened in the last uh but you have to anticipate in add on time of 6 months compared to your regular approvals so if your regular approval is 6 months this is 6 plus 6 so 12 months is the approval process on a total timeline basis before you can move out of your uh, homes so a cluster redevelopment i think makes a lot more sense uh, if you are as i mentioned earlier if you have the right road width if you are outside crz and your tenement density is more than 1.4 or something like that then it makes sense i think great so with that we have addressed all the questions also what i'll request team tufcon is uh, to share a copy of their presentation with uh, all the viewers and the registered participants uh, which we'll try and do so that they can get information about uh, self redevelopment uh, development manager processes for redevelopment tufcon is clearly one of the leading players uh, with a lot of experience under their belt uh, in this space and uh, you know they'll be able to assist you all and also with regards to any further uh, questions um, any further uh, queries you all have please do write in to us because this is a recorded video which will be available also later on 
so we could also reach out to uh, architect milin sir's office and have those queries uh, resolved uh, so i think on this uh, note i think it will be good to conclude uh, this uh, hour long uh, session which has been extremely extremely fruitful and very informative uh, i for one is uh, surely uh, uh, you know convinced that 339 is the right uh, foot forward uh, towards development which is not only more viable but also more sustainable and holistic in terms of planning and uh, urban uh, principles so Thank we you. will uh, at at study circle uh, uh, you know we'll be coming up with more sessions over to you ajay bhai for the closing note and we could wrap up the session i am very uh, extremely thankful to anand dilia sir and especially janak bhai for taking the initiative architect milin changani sir you are extremely extremely enlightening um, the light is uh, going bumper to me sometimes in between you are speaking i am not technical guy but uh, very 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 interesting uh, uh, in, in insight th thoughtful you are given and uh, uh, advocate uh, harshal saudai is part of uh, real estate study circle is in our um, advisory committee also and uh, Nain Dedia, sir. Again, we will be calling up into couple of other uh, subjects, and he is a very, 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 very learned person and very experienced person. The kind of the presentation which he has given that that shows that the experience that uh, they, they are executed the societies, and I think they are the one of the largest in suburbs. I think so. Janak Bhai will able to just guide us. Janak Bhai, just two words from your uh, tough cons from your side. Ah, uh, Nayan Bhai, in the guide to Nayan Bhai and Jayant guide only, we are doing a very large work. We had a today one lakh square meter work with us. So, when we are progressing, we expect another one lakh square meter in the by next few, six months only. We are very, very professional and very, very, very uh, uh, polite. Thank you, thank you very much, um, architect Milin sir and. Um, Sir Harshal Savla, you have really made this very, very enlightening, very interesting session. I am thankful to all of you, and uh, so see to it. And all the questions which will be coming up and be forwarded to the point and to Melissa, whatever, and this to be recorded version will be will be viral. Everyone will be also school. And I am thankful to my team also, the Institute Study Circle, and it made it happen. So we are, we are trying to be very innovative, very different. Thank you all who has attended. Thank you very much. Thank we you. are thankful to Ajay Bhai. We are thankful to Ajay Bhai, Milin Sir, and Arshu Bhai. Thank, 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 thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Its recording will be recorded.